Good morning. Welcome to Live 4-5 with Pastor Ben, the place where we get to dig into God's Word for just a few minutes, and it shapes our day with how we think and talk and act. I hear that some people have been having difficulty with uh, getting the live notification to come up and then to come on to your phone. Um, you know, I've I've helped a few people and done a deep dive into like their phone notifications or Facebook notifications on their phone or computer or however they're viewing it. And I haven't been able to figure out anything specifically about how to best make the notifications work. Um, first would be to make sure the app is fully updated. That'd be my first guess as far as some of the consistent things that I'd seen. The other one is just to be on your phone at 928 and be ready for 929 when it goes live. That's that's really the best advice I can give at this point, but a few people in the last week have mentioned that. So um, for those that are successfully on and getting the notifications right on time, maybe you have something that you can um, give as advice. Um, as one that is not tuning in live, I don't have the greatest advice because I'm not figuring that out myself. But anyway, good morning, Terry and Diana and June and Bev. Let's make our beginning this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. Even when it's raining or rainy, kind of like it is here in Durango today. Well, if you pull out the Version Bible app or go to Bible.com, our verse of the day is Matthew chapter 5, verse 4. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Now, I'm guessing that what what's going to happen is that over the next few days, we're going to go through all these beatitudes, all these blessings. So on Monday, we're probably going to be into verse 7. That would be my guess. Um, but blessed are those who mourn. Now, this is there's an important interplay here between the present and the future of what will be. The present of what is happening now and the future of what will be. So the present is those who are mourning. The future is will be comforted. The people in mourning. Jesus speaks of something that will continue to characterize the lives of his disciples until that final day of full comfort and the consummation of the age when it finally re results in Jesus returning and restoring creation. But... This is an acknowledgement that even those in a current present blessing in the reign of God through Jesus will still also experience evil and sin in the world, things that will cause them to mourn. So I, I recently saw something that is, is worth noting. Fear says, what if? And faith says, even if. And that's a helpful way to look at all of these beatitudes that we're going to look at for the next few days. If you keep, I don't know. It, I, I'm curious to know if you look at the U Version Bible app on days when we don't have live for five. Um, but as you go through these, if you keep doing this and you go through these beatitudes, I would like you to think in that way. Fear says, what if I am mourning? And then it deals with the what if I'm mourning. But faith says, even if I'm mourning, there is comfort. Some in the now, and then there's full comfort in the not yet. Something that is very important for Matthew, for Matthew to present to his audience, is there is a now reality and to all of these things that he's going to roll out in these blessings. And then there is a not yet. So there is a short-sighted, small way in which you're comforted now, but then there is a not yet full completion of that comfort coming in the future. So this is what causes, there is something that causes this morning, and that's present sin, present evil in the world. 
both in the lives of those who mourn and in the church. But there's this tension. There's this tension that you can feel in this already, already now and this not yet with this reign and rule of God in Jesus. And it's, it's central to this message of the Beatitudes, but it's also central to the understanding of the Christian life. And this is what makes a funeral sermon uh, easier to handle for the Christian. Because we mourn, but we mourn with hope for the not yet. For those who don't have the hope of the resurrection, they mourn only in the now, and they have no hope. And so that's something that is at play in all of these Beatitudes, but particularly for those who mourn. Matthew chapter 5 verse 4 is not commanding you to mourn though. It's not saying, hey, go mourn so that you can be comforted. It's not to mourn more fully or anything like that. It would only be become a word of law if anyone were foolish enough to think that Jesus that that they could be Jesus disciples and encounter no cause for mourning this is all about hope for the disciple this is not something that is going to be helpful. This whole list of things, especially this one, is not going to be helpful for someone that's not a disciple of Christ. This is for the already, the, the person already clinging to the promises of Christ. And if someone is mourning without hope and without comfort, then and, and you're aware of it, then it would be of your interest to enter into their mourning with them and share the gospel of Christ with them so that they can learn to mourn with comfort and hope. I pray that your mourning will also be accompanied with comfort. Comfort in the now, but not fully comforted. Complete comfort in the not yet, but is coming. Let us pray. Gracious Savior, Keep our eyes focused on you and your blessings, which are ours by grace alone. We pray that you would give us comfort now in our mourning and complete comfort when you return to restore all things. We pray this in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessings to you in Christ. We have a joyful message to share with those who are mourning. Blessings to you. We'll see you soon.